This YouTube episode is brought to you by Double Down Casino. Practice poker with Double Down by visiting www.doubledowncasino.com. Enter promo code HPT, the number four, Double Down to receive one million in virtual chips. Enjoy. This is the HPT. Sit right down, put on your poker face, you with the big dogs now. Better bring your best game, talk trash on your wall. To me, it's all the same, you won't leave with much when you come in second place. And I'm the one with the stack showing seven to the jack on crying. Oh, mama, cause I'm sending you back. I'll be the last man standing with the money in my hand. I'll be the last man standing with the money in my hand. Last man standing with the money in my hand. I'll be the last man standing with the money in my hand. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the HPT. I'm James Larson, joined by the brains of this operation, Maria Ho. Now, tonight, Maria and I are going to wrap things up from the Soaring Eagle Casino Resort right here in beautiful Mount Pleasant, Michigan. This Michigan property is really top notch. All players all week long have been coming up to us telling us how much they're enjoying themselves here. And there's definitely plenty to do. From the full service spot to the giant gaming floor, Soaring Eagle has it all. They do indeed, Maria. Although the remaining five players at this final table aren't interested in any of the amenities, they've all got tunnel vision on the first place prize. Over $137,000 awaits our winner. These players have checked, raised, and folded their way through hundreds of players to get where they're at now. Now each of them is only a few eliminations away from claiming that victory. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch these players at this nationally televised final table. Before we get to the action, let's go ahead and meet the remaining players. My name is Ted Tober. I'm from Bay City, Michigan, and uh, I'm retired from GM. Hi, my name is Tony Mastriani from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm the head of air freight for a freight forwarder out of Detroit. Hi, my name is Gus Fergos, and I'm from Shelby Township, Michigan. My occupation is that I have a painting company. My name is John Drakakis. I'm from Battle Creek, Michigan, and I work in shipping and receiving for my uncle and my father. I'm Bruce Rollin from Truffaut, Michigan. I'm a retired car salesman. Now that you've met the players, let's go ahead and take a look at tonight's prize pool. Up top, it's truly life-changing money, just over $137,000. Second, we'll go home with $84,547, just over $55,000 for third place, $38,403 for fourth, and fifth place, $28,571. All right, Maria, let's go ahead and take a look at the players' chip counts. Gus Bergos is our chip leader. John Drakakis and Anthony Mastriani have 2.8 and 2.7 million, respectively. Our short stack, Bruce Rolland, has 790,000. Blinds are 30,000, 60,000 with a 10K ante. And let's get right back to the action. All right, the button's on the one seat, so under the gun here is Gus in seat number seven. And Gus is going to raise it up to 180,000 with ace nine. John Trakakis behind him looks down at 10-8 of spades. Decides to let that go. Over to Teddy now in the one seat. And Ted is going to make the call with pocket jacks. Finally a hand for Teddy. I think I'm a little bit surprised that five-handed Ted just calls the raise. I would probably have three bet if I were Ted. He also has 35 big blinds, so I think that it's fine to three bet get it in with that stack size and that hand. But we are going to go heads up to the flop between Gus and Ted. Tony and Bruce both folding. And the flop is 8 4 deuce rainbow. Ted has an over pair to the board. He is way in the lead. Gus here has ace high, and he is going to follow up his pre-flop raise with a bet of 160000 Be interesting to see here what Ted does if he raises now. Yeah, I think I would like to see Ted raise here. I think if he's just planning on calling the whole way here because he's unsure of where he's at in the hand, it makes it a little bit harder for him to play. Turn card now, the ace of clubs. Bad news for Ted, but good news for Gus. But Gus decides now after he's paired his ace to check it over to Ted. He checks Ted bets, 375,000. And Gus makes the call. 
So we go to the river now, Maria, and the river card is the seven of spades. You'd expect Gus to lead out here. Yeah, I'm not sure if he was checking it over, thinking he was giving Ted an opportunity to bluff or just playing it safe there, but either way, Ted is going to get away from that fairly cheaply. He looks a little upset that he thinks he let Gus hit that ace on the turn. Gus is from the Shelby Township here in Michigan. Good friend of his is Joe Cata. Of course, we all know World Series of Poker main event champion Joe Cata. Played a lot of our HPT events now. Joe, I think, was a great ambassador for poker during his time as main event champion. And another friend of mine, Dash Dudley, is also from the Michigan area. Some good players to come out of there. Ted and Tony both folding now to the button. Our short stack, Bruce, he's going to raise it up to 100 and 30,000 with ace queen. I think with 10 big blinds and a hand like ace queen, I would just prefer if he put it all in the middle. That way you know for sure you get to see five cards. You're not going to have somebody just call you pre-flop and possibly take you off the hand after the flop. But here we see Gus calling with an inferior hand, ace four. Gus can call there, Maria. He's got plenty of chips. Flop is 10, six, four, rainbow. Gus is going to go ahead and check, and Bruce is going to get him all in the middle. And this is kind of the problem with Bruce not going all in here. Now he is behind. He will get to see the other two cards, though, but I think if he had moved in, Gus probably wouldn't have called him with ace four. Either way, as it stands, Bruce is now looking for a queen to save his tournament life. No queen on the turn. It's the five of clubs. So Bruce drawing to one of the remaining three queens left in the deck, or he will be eliminated here in fifth place. And the river card, Maria, the king of clubs. So no mas for Bruce. Only about $600 invested to get here. He's going out with a nice little payday, just under $29,000. Great finish for Bruce in the action here. Four-handed is going to just continue to heat up. Another knockout at this nationally televised final table coming to you from the Soaring Eagle Casino Resort here in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. And when we come back, we'll have the conclusion, and we're going to find out who our new champion is going to be. Welcome back to the HPT. James Larson and Maria Ho. We are at the Soaring Eagle Casino Resort. Maria, this is where it gets to be a lot of fun. Only four players remain at this final table. Gus Vergos remains our chip leader with five and a half million. Anthony has just over three million, while John Drakakis has almost two and a half million. Our short stack is Ted Tober. Lines are 30,000 to 60,000 with a 10K ante. The button here will be on Gus, so under the gun will be Tony. Looking down at pocket deuces. And he raises to 130000 Gus folds on the button. To the small blind, we go now to John. He folds. And Teddy in the big is going to make the call with 9-8 of clubs. I think out of these four remaining players, it's safe to say that Ted is probably the least aggressive of them. And look at this flop, Maria. 9-4 deuce. A set of deuces for Tony. Yeah, and unfortunately for Ted, he's flopped top pair here, and it looks like he wants to take this opportunity to lead into Tony. Now, how do you play this if you're Anthony? As Teddy bets here, a quarter million. If you're Anthony, well, we're going to find out how he does right there. He immediately goes all in, and a snap call by Teddy. I think it just depends on what Tony thought Ted had there. If Tony thought Ted had a strong holding, then I, I don't mind him putting him all in. But I also think that if you don't feel like Ted has a hand that he would call an all-in with, then you might consider slow playing bottom set there. Well, Maria, all the chips are now in the middle, and we will see what happens here on the turn and river. Tony's looking in great shape to eliminate Ted on this hand. The turn is the four of clubs. So now Tony's actually improved to a full house. But if Ted hits a nine or a four on the river, he'll actually have a bigger boat. Now, neither player, they, they don't feel real comfortable here because it's poker, Maria, and you know anything can happen, of course, on the river. And we go to that river card now. It's never over until it's over. I've seen worse beats come in. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh, the nine of hearts. And it does come in this time for Ted here. This is just a miracle river card. Look at Teddy. His friends call him TT. Anthony doesn't know what to think. That's a massive pot going Ted's way. Little bit of a bad beat doled out to Tony here. Unbelievable. The nine of hearts on the river. Look at Ted. He's celebrating. 
thumbs up, talking to Israel. He's a happy camper here at this HPT final table. It's like we set this hand up for TV or something. Unbelievable. So with that, Teddy's going to win that pot. Like I said, his friends call him TT. Blinds and Andy's going up now. 40,000, 80,000. With a 10K chip, Annie will start with Tony. He's still upset after that last hand as he folds 10 deuce. That's a terrible beat. It might take him a little while to shake that off, but one thing that I've learned from my final table experience is you've got to just move on to the next hand. You really do. Gus is going to raise it up to 180,000 chips with 7-4 of clubs. Wow, back to Teddy, and look what he wakes up with now. Pocket aces. And he decides he wants to slow play them a bit against Gus, and who can blame him? Gus has been raising a lot of hands here, so Ted just wants to make sure he gets maximum value. Flop is king do seven. A couple of clubs, a pretty good flop for Gus, but Teddy's still in the lead with his aces. Gus has flopped middle pair and a flush draw, so Gus decides to bet, and Ted raises now, and with a huge draw like Gus has, he at least is going to call, and he does do that. Let's go ahead and see the turn card now. And the turn card is the nine of hearts. I'm all in. And Teddy is all in. Ted goes all in, making it almost 2.8 million for Gus to call here. Does Gus want to call almost a two times pot size bet here on a draw? That's your money. It ain't mine. <laughs> He knows his pair of sevens can't huh? possibly be, be good, yes, but do. he knows he has some outs here. He's smiling. He's having fun. How can he not be having fun? Spiking that nine on the last hand. Life is good for TT. Gus isn't getting the right odds to call here on a flush draw, so I think he is going to fold. It's a huge overbet on Ted's part. Good bet, man. Good bet. I can't do it. Here with the flush on the flop. Can't fold. And Gus is going to fold it. He's going to lay it down. Teddy's going to win, and he's not going to show. Oh, he is going to show. Can we, can, we, can we run the river? <laughs> you don't like that, Maria? Run it one time. Yeah, I mean, me I feel like show. sometimes people at the table just start getting into a habit of showing cards. I always like to, you know, keep my cards to myself if I can. Teddy's getting in the groove now. Button is on Gus under the gun here. It will be Tony. He folds. On the button, now we go to Gus. And he's going to go ahead and raise it up with Queen 5, going to go to 200,000. Now over to John Rakakis in the 8 seat. Hat still on backwards. He looks down at King Queen. And as I've said before, I feel like John has played this final table really well, picking his spots very wisely. He knows that both Gus and Tony are very aggressive, so he is just being a little more selective, and I don't mind selective aggression at all. And he makes the call. Teddy gets out of the way. And we go to the flop. And the flop is king, four, tray, couple of diamonds. That gives John top pair here. And Gus, nothing. But as we've seen, Gus doesn't let that slow him down. And I think that's what John is expecting and hoping for, actually. And so if I were John, I would just check call here and let Gus bet. And as you can see, Gus bets 200,000. John's going to go nowhere here, Maria. It's a matter of him calling here or raising. I like just calling here on John's part. I think you just check again and let him bet the whole way. So now the four comes on the turn, Maria, making a pair on the board and three diamonds. And Gus has the five of diamonds. He decides to check back here. And on the river, the six of hearts. And I think John should be fairly certain now that he has the best hand and maybe go for a value bet and hope that Gus has something that he could call him with. John is reaching for chips. He is going to wager 275000 And as we can see, Gus doesn't have anything he could call him with, but does Gus want to try to raise this river by any chance? He's reaching. Look at this. He's going to raise it up. He's going to raise to 600,000. And an instant call by John, and he flips over his cards, and Gus says, yeah, I made a little mistake there. Yeah, I think his raise size just isn't enough to get John to lay that down, and I think the way the hand was played, 
John felt pretty certain he had the best hand, so when he bets there, he wasn't intending on folding to a raise. He final table the last time we were here in Michigan, and he's back to do a little better than his sixth place finish from last year. We've only got four players left now, so all these players can feel the tension starting to build. Come back and watch the conclusion of this final table here on the HPT. Welcome back to the HPT. We've got only four players left at this final table, and they've had to fight a tough battle to get this far. Let's see who's going to become our next HPT champion. Let's get down to the action. John Dracakis is our chip leader. He has just over 4.4 million. Ted Tober, just slightly behind John, has 4.1 million. Gus has 2.3 million. And Tony, who was once our chip leader, has now fallen to the short stack with just over 1 million. Look at that stack swing for Tony. I mean, like you said, he was the chip leader. He's going the wrong way here very fast. Sometimes when you play a bit of an aggressive game, it could also be a very swingy game as well. Indeed, Maria. Blinds now 40,000, 80,000 with a 10K ante. It's going to raise it up to 205,000 with pocket fours. Folded to the big blind of Gus, who looks down at pocket sevens, and he is going to make the call. We go heads up to the flop now, Gus and John. And the flop, look at this, Maria. Jack, 9-4. John flops a set, and it's quickly checked over to him. There are two over cards to Gus's pair, though, so I don't know how much he's willing to invest in this hand, but that board might just save him some money. John bets 275000 and Gus makes the call. The turn card is the Deuce of Diamonds. Gus is going to check again. And no doubt John is just going to bet the whole way and hope that he gets paid off. doesn't have very much to be afraid of here. He's got no fear. He just bet 350000 And, you know, I think given their last dynamic where Gus tried to bluff John, I think Gus seems like he is pretty committed to staying stubborn in this hand, and he might just call John all the way down here. Gus makes the call. We go ahead to the river now, and the river card, the nine of diamonds. So a full house now for John, but Gus is first. He's going to check over to John. And like I said, whether or not Gus calls him on this river bet is really going to just depend on if Gus is still thinking about that last hand or not. I think that when somebody fires three bullets on this board, you've got to think your sevens aren't good. But if you're feeling like you kind of want some revenge and want to try to get your chips back, you might make a loose call here. But unfortunately, Gus will be wrong. He makes a bet of 500,000 chips. Feel like he's just screaming to get paid off here and Look at this. Gus is going to do it. Sometimes the dynamic from previous hands make players continue to compound some mistakes that they might not be making otherwise. Gus makes the call. He's not real happy about it. But that guy right there, John Rikakis, things are going right for him. Talked about this before. The last time we were in town, he made a final table, a sixth place finish. And I talked to him before this event, and he really wants to do better than that. Blinds 50,000, 100,000 with a 10K ante. We start with Mr. Dukakis. He looks at 10 9 of hearts. Do you feel a momentum swing here, Maria? Absolutely. Honestly, so much of poker sometimes is momentum. And when the momentum shifts your way, you should be trying to take full advantage. And that is exactly what John is doing. Right and, and you look at Gus on that last shot. He just still looks like he's tilting a little bit. As John raises now to 250000 Teddy gets out of the way. Tony gets out of the way. And back to Gus. He's not in a good spot right now. No, and Gus decides he wants to move all in here with Ace Jack, which is the right play for his hand. Eight and change. Things just not going well for him these last few hands. He does shove all in here. As Maria said, Ace of Diamonds, Jack of Spades, the, the right thing to do. And I got a feeling John's going to look him up. Yeah. John's getting a count here to see what are the odds that he is getting to make this call. And not to mention, Maria, sometimes you got to kind of play the rush, but John's not going to do it. He's going to go ahead and fold, and Gus is going to win this hand. Good for Gus here because he, he needed to turn something around, even if it was a small pot. John decides he wants to wait for a better spot to try to KO Gus. You are watching exclusive final table coverage from the Soaring Eagle Casino Resort here in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. James Larson and Maria Ho, happy to be with you tonight. We start with Gus. John Dracakis is now our overwhelming chip leader here. 
he is just trying to put on a clinic as we whittle down to our new HPT champion. And he's calm and cool, by the way, Maria. To his right, though, Gus is going to go all in here. It's an all-in raise with King Queen. Gus moves 12 big blinds all in with King Queen. And John behind him has sevens. I have a feeling John is going to make the call here. John does make the call, Maria. Like you said, pocket sevens. Teddy gets out of the way. Now over to Tony with ace eight. He's going to let that go from the big blind. So now it will be Gus, who was once our chip leader. Now his tournament life is on the line after a few King missteps. He is the one at risk. He's all in. And behind, the good news is he does have two overs. But right now the pocket sevens of John's are in the lead. Good luck, kid. Great sportsmanship here in Michigan all week. A lot of the players know each other. They play a lot of cash games together and see each other at various events. Here comes the flop, Maria. It's the Jack 5-4. John, sevens are still in the lead. And that friendly yet competitive atmosphere is what I love best about our HPT events. I've always found all the players to be extremely gracious. Turn card now is the four of diamonds. Queen on the river? <laughs> One time for us. So Gus is still looking for that king or queen on the river. Otherwise, John is going to eliminate him and keep his overwhelming chip lead. Let's go ahead and see that river card now. The river card is the five of hearts. So no luck for Gus, and that's going to eliminate him here in fourth place. He'll go home with a nice little payday, just over $38,000. And we are down to three players. Which one of them is going to be our newest HPT champion? Come back to find out from Soaring Eagle in Mount Pleasant, Michigan, here with the HPT. Welcome back to the HPT. It's James Larson and Maria Ho. We are at the Soaring Eagle Casino Resort here in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. All of our players obviously want to be our next HPT champion, but the real cool part is, and what everybody's got their eyes on, is that cash prize of just over 137000 with three players remaining, our chip leader is John Dracakis. He has over eight million in chips, an overwhelming chip lead over the other two players. Ted's got 2.6 million, and Anthony is our short stack still with one and a half million. Yeah, Maria, the real story here, it's all John Dracakis, the 30-year-old who final tabled here last November, sixth place trying to win this championship. We start there with John as he raises it up to a quarter million with A7. Looks like Teddy found a hand. Ted does look like he is going to re-raise from the small blind with pocket queens making it 500,000 to go. So it's only 250,000 more for John to call and he will be in position. I know John's probably thinking that Ted is on the tight side though, but for this price, I don't think John can fold. John's going to make the call. Maria, I love his table demeanor, and he's been very patient all day. Waited for the cards to heat up, and they have. And the flop is Jack, seven, four, two diamonds. That means John has flopped middle pair. And Ted just moving all in, just 2.5 million into a pot of over 1 million. It's all or nothing every time Ted's in the pot. Ted's moving all in. I'm sure John's going to fold. He knows that last time Ted did this, Ted showed aces. And this is also why I say don't show your cards because people start picking up on patterns with your betting. And John knows better than to make this call for an overbet. John's going to fold. TT, as his friends call him, is going to win this pot. His total career winning, $60,000. Blinds going up now, 60K, 120K with a 15K ante. Do you think John will ever flip a hat around regular or is it going to be on backwards the whole time? No, I feel like he started going on a rush ever since he flipped it backwards. So why fix it now if it ain't broke? Over the top. Go rent the VHS. It's a good move. <laughs> All right, over to TT now. TT is going to raise to 360000 with King-10. Anthony's got ace jack of hearts and he's only got 16 big blinds so surely he's going to try to move this all in. I know Ted has a tight image but this is a pretty standard shove here. So Anthony's going to re-raise to 800,000. TT quickly goes all in and Anthony snaps him right up and we're going to turn these cards over. Look at Teddy just whips his cards down. He's going to find out he's behind. 
Yeah, Ted so definitely really finds really certain really moments to get aggressive. This time he is behind, but it is Anthony's tournament life that's at stake. John just loves sitting back and watching here. He wants to get this heads up with the chip lead. Jack eight, deuce, they're all spades. So that pairing up Anthony's hand. So now Ted is looking for a king here. No king there, Maria. That's the five of hearts. So let's go ahead and see that river card now. Anthony's tournament life on the line and the four spades comes off, so Anthony will get a full double up here. So Tony, who was our once dominant chip leader, had a little struggle midway through this final table, but picking up a pot there at the expense of TT. All right, Maria, we need to step aside right now and show our viewers a quick interview we did earlier in the week with Dutch Boy. Now, Dutch is somebody that I've seen play poker. I've seen him on TV, heard a lot about him, but until we got a chance to catch up with him, didn't really know too much about the man known as Dutch Boy. You know, the only thing that probably beat the feeling of that first World Series of Poker win was my very first tournament win. And this was like a $50 event. You know, I was 18 years old and uh, won this little uh, mantle clock as a trophy. Uh, that might be that might be the high. I'm Dutch Boyd, professional poker player. I'm a three-time World Series of Poker bracelet winner. Every single Heartland Poker Tour that I've ever played was was really reasonable, um, and the structures just can't be beat. So I figured I'd you know it'd be a nice change of pace, get out of uh, the the desert heat, and come up and en enjoy some poker up here in Michigan. Is there a difference in the vibe between a World Series of Poker event and an HPT event? Not at all. It's exactly the same vibe. Uh, everybody's here to win it. Everybody is uh, focused. The difference really between a good player and a great player isn't that drastic. Uh, so wherever you go, they're gonna be tough. You know, there's gonna be tough competition. There's gonna be people who are really there to win it. Because when it comes down to it, what's a more important tournament going on today than the one right here in Soaring Eagle? This is the, the biggest tournament in the world today. How many bracelets do I think I have in me? I've been averaging about one every four years. Um, I feel like I'm playing better every time I, I touch the felt. So, probably have another 40 years in me. I think I'll get up to double digits, for sure. And I, I think that uh, you know it's getting you know it's getting easier to close every time you, you you sit down. And my game's getting better, not worse. The great thing about poker is there's always room for improvement. My best advice to you know people who are just coming up in poker and you know playing the trails. Don't find yourself in, in a position where poker is is all you are uh, because you know winning winning tournaments is fun winning you know ha hitting big scores is great but uh, there's there's a lot more to life than just packing your suitcase and going to the next tournament I've played with Dutch several times throughout my career and he's always been a nice guy friendly guy and a good poker player at that come back for more final table action here from Soaring Eagle in Mount Pleasant Michigan Welcome back to the HPT. It's James Larson and Maria Ho broadcasting from the Soaring Eagle Casino Resort here in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Three players left, but the story right now is all Johnny Dracakis. It certainly looks like the John Dracakis show here. He's got 7.4 million to Anthony's 3.2 million, and Ted has 1.6 million, which is 14 big blinds. Blinds now 60K, 120K with a 15K ante. First to act will be Tony. Tony looks down at king five of spades here. Feel like this is an open on the button, but I guess he's had enough action for the day so far. He's just gonna let this one go. Johnny's gonna shove all in here with ace eight of diamonds and TT snap calls. Maria, is the graphic right? Is that Trey Deuce? Yeah, I think Ted's just kind of like, you know what? I'm ready to gamble. I'm ready to double up or go home. Here we go, three deuce of diamonds, beat that. John. Not a whole lot of chips left for Teddy, obviously, but he's going to get her all in with Trey Deuce. John's in a dominating position here. He has the better flush draw, and he's got ace high. Ted's looking for a couple threes and a couple of twos on this flop. And here comes the flop. It's ace, queen, deuce. Nothing much has changed here. They both paired, but John obviously has the better pair. Ted's looking for another deuce or a three here. Are you still wondering why TT called here a million? Ooh, hours? Maybe because he knew that was gonna happen. Maybe because he knew he was gonna turn two pair on John. That's a little dirty here. John looking for an ace, a queen, or an eight here. Otherwise, Ted is gonna get a double up here. 
because he just felt like gambling. Unbelievable. The tray of spades on the turn, and here comes the river, the king of diamonds. So the double up is complete for TT. Maria, are you ready for this? Trays and deuces. Some pro poker players on the circuit like to say no gamble, no future. I think Ted might have heard that one. Wow. Teddy happy. John even flopped an ace, Maria. Come on. And you know, Maria, a pretty big uh, pay jump here from third place to second. We're talking like $35,000. That's real money. I think somebody needs to show Ted the payout structure. Ted's thinking I'm either going to win this thing or <laughs> I'm going home. I'm going to have Ted buy me a Michigan Powerball ticket. This guy's running good. As people say, that's poker. I know you guys don't like to hear it, but it's true. Johnny Dracock is going to fold the 9-4. Teddy would have shoved with it. Over to TT now in the one seat. Well, he's just going to limp here. And the option is checked now for Tony. He's just wondering what's going on here at this final table. I think he's trying to gather his bearings a bit from the last hand. And the flop is Jack, 9-8, two hearts. That gives Ted an open-ended straight draw to go with his pair of eights. Anthony's got nothing. Both players check. We go to the turn. And that turn card is the tray of spades. So now Anthony's got a little piece. So does that mean he wants to call this bet from Ted? It looks like he is. It looks like he doesn't feel like folding right now. Ted bets 300,000 chips. Anthony's going to raise here. We're going to go up to 800,000. Not only is Anthony not going to fold, but he's going to raise here. But with Ted having a pair and an open-ended straight draw, he decides to call. Well, of course he's going to make the call. Look at Tony. He's scared to see this river card. And we go to the river. It's the deuce of clubs. Ted checks, and Tony goes all in. That's going to be good enough to get Ted off the best hand. Ted was hoping to hit his straight but he wasn't going to call otherwise. Now Anthony's got to be feeling good. He's got some chips back, and he actually pulled off a bluff against Ted there. The momentum is changing here at this HPT nationally televised final table. When we come back, three-handed play will resume. This episode of the HPT is brought to you by our friends at Double Down Casino. Get started today with 1 million free virtual chips by visiting www.doubledowncasino.com. Enter promo code HPT for Double Down. That's promo code HPT for Double Down. You can also find Double Down Casino on Facebook, iOS, or Android stores. It's time to step aside for a quick commercial break, but when we come back, more exciting HPT action. Welcome back to the HPT. I'm James Larson, joined with Maria Ho. Before we get back to this final table coming to you from the Soaring Eagle Casino Resort, I want to let you know about our website. You can head right on over to hptpoker.com, pick an event that will work for you, and who knows, maybe you'll be playing for the life-changing cash. John Drakakis looks like he's in great position to take this down and improve on his sixth place finish from last time. He has 7.2 million. Anthony has 4.6 million. And Ted is our short stack with four big blinds. Blinds are 60,000, 120,000 with a 15K ante. Button is on TT in the one and playing three handed, but we first act. He's very short now. He's only got four big blinds. I think some of that gambling got the better of him. And now he's going to move all in here with Ace Jack offsuit. Oh, he's all in. Tony's going to fold, but John Drakakis says, I'll look you up with my Ace Queen, and he's going to find out. John is that he's ahead, and maybe Teddy will get his wish, and he'll get to go home now. Ace Queen of John versus the Ace Jack of Teddy. Ted looking for a Jack here. Let's go ahead and see the flop now. Whew. Right there in the a, window. There was a Jack in the window, but a Queen right behind it, which puts John right back in the lead where he started. Could also chop with John if he hits a 10. That's all I can do. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Ten gives me a push. That's it. Oh, Jack, yeah. Turn card now, the nine of hearts. Teddy's thinking this may be the end of my run. John's still very little emotion. I love his final table demeanor. Let's go to the river card now, Maria, and that river card 
is the ace of diamonds, so nothing changes in the hand. John Drakakis will eliminate TT, and he'll have a nice little payday, just under $70,000. And this is what John was hoping all along when he started out at this final table. I'm sure he wanted to get heads up and to be heads up with the chip lead here. Almost a two to one chip lead on Anthony, in fact, is a really great way to start this heads up match. And after a long week here, an awesome week at the Soaring Eagle Casino Resort here in Mount Pleasant, we're finally down to our final two players. I love watching Heads Up Poker and Maria with these two guys. I expect some early fireworks. Absolutely. Both of these players are aggressive and they will not back down. They both want this title real bad. You could tell by the way that they have been playing. And so I'm very interested to see what's going to happen. Johnny's going to raise it to 285,000 chips with Jack 8 of clubs. Anthony makes a call here with King 6 offsuit. And you can expect to see a lot of hands being played, at least to the flop in heads up. There's not going to be a lot of folding. Flop is 10, 9, deuce, rainbow. So John's got an open-ended straight draw here. Mm -hmm. Anthony's got Thank nothing, you. but he wants to lead into John here. Just trying to rep what's on the board. And Tony says same bet of 285,000 chips. John quickly makes the call. Out of these two, Marie, I think Tony's got a little more gamble in him. Yeah, and I think that sometimes that could pay off, but I like John's game of, like I said, being calculated, selectively aggressive. I think he's got a good head on his shoulders here for this heads-up match. Turn card now, seven of spades, so bingo, bango, bongo. John's straight coming in here. Oh, and he decides to be a little bit cagey here, checking back, hoping that Anthony will hit something on the river so that he could get paid off. And here comes that river card, pairs the board, the deuce of hearts now. Gotcha. And we start with Tony. We'll see if he fires, and he's going to check. John will have to put out some size of a bet here. I think John was hoping that he could get Tony to bite on the river, but now that he doesn't, he's just hoping that Tony will pay him off. As we can see, unless Anthony wants to try to raise on a bluff here, I don't think he's going to put any more chips in this pot. And the bet is 600,000 chips. And Tony is going to fold. So the winner of the hand is Johnny Drakakis, adding to his chip stack here at this HPT final table from Mount Pleasant, Michigan, and the Soaring Eagle Casino Resort. Let's take a break from the action here and go into our favorite segment on the show, A Poker Life with Doyle Brunson, brought to you by Double Down Casino. Visit www.doubledowncasino.com and receive 1 million virtual chips. Enter promo code HPT for Double Down. That's promo code HPT, the number four, Double Down. This week, Doyle talks to us about a horrible accident that ended his basketball hopes and dreams. I, uh... Worked for U.S. Gypsum. I uh, was unloading and loading boxcars uh, with sheetrock. And this forklift came up and had a big load of sheetrock on top of it. And it set, set it down, and we would take it one piece at a time and load it onto a, a railroad car. But it broke down at the bottom and started sliding. And I, like a big dummy, I stepped in front of it and tried to stop it. And it just, for two tons, and it just went right over. It's wonder it hadn't killed me. But it just went right over me and just snapped my leg, and my leg was sitting like this. And that was my first thought, you know, said I'll never be able to play basketball again. I would have married my college sweetheart for sure, and I never would have met Louise. And so then I never would have had my family. I never would have been a gambler for sure. Uh, and so it completely reversed my life uh, for the better. I'm, my family for sure, you know, I mean, that part of it. I don't know. Uh, I've had a, a wonderful career, I guess, and a lot of excitement. So I, I guess it, uh, it's probably for the best, yeah. You know, Maria, I could listen to those stories all afternoon long. I mean, it's Doyle Brunson, the Texas Dolly, a true legend in the poker world. I want to thank our sponsor of A Poker Life with Doyle Brunson, the folks over at Double Down Casino, and you can visit them at www.doubledowncasino.com and receive your exclusive HPT bonus offer of 1 million virtual chips. Enter promo code HPT for Double Down. That's promo code HPT for Double Down. 
You can also find Double Down Casino on Facebook, iOS, or Android. We'll be right back after these messages. You're watching the HPT. Welcome back to the HPT. It's James Larson and Maria Ho. And Maria, we are finally to the point we've been waiting for the entire show. Heads up, poker. Let's head right down to the final table. John Dukakis is our chip leader. He's got nine million. Anthony's got three and a half million, which is representative of 22 big blinds. Blinds are now 80,000, 160,000 with a 20K ante. I got to spend a little time with each of these guys throughout the week, and both just a couple of nice guys, Marie. So it's good to see these two here at the final table playing heads up for the championship. John's going to raise it up now to 390,000 with 10 nine of hearts. I'll call. And Anthony makes the call with 9 8 offsuit. So we go to the flop now. And the flop is queen, queen, deuce with a couple of hearts. So John has a flush draw. Anthony has nothing but nine high here. But I don't think Anthony's the kind of player that needs cards to play, which is a good thing. Both players checking. Johnny thinking, well, I'll, I'll take a free card here to see if a heart comes. And bam, right there on the turn, the four of hearts. And wow, John does make the flush. And what? I guess Anthony just wants to move all in. Three million in chips here with no redraw. He's got nine eight with no heart at all. That's what you call a goose egg. And I'm just shocked that Anthony would overbet that pot and he doesn't even have a heart in his hand. Nothing. Yeah. An unbelievable chain of events there, and yes, drawing dead, the river card comes, the ace of diamonds, but that's going to do it. This thing is over. Going out in second place is Tony, a nice payday, but I, I don't think he's going to sleep well tonight, knowing he made that decision to end the tournament. John Dracakis is our newest HPT champion. He must be so happy to get that monkey off his back after making this final table once before. But first, let's go down and talk to Anthony about his roller coaster final table. It was a long day. You yeah. made it. Heads up. You go out in second. How do you feel right now? Pretty good. Um, I was pretty big early. I, I think I came in in third place to the final table. I knew it was going to be tough. Uh, quite a few of these guys I saw yesterday. Um, at one point, I got pretty large here and I tried to take control and probably got over my skis a little bit with a few hands. Uh, and then John just started to take it away about midday. Uh, so a couple hands I got in, uh, I was way behind. Uh, well, I was way ahead and got way behind on the river. <laughs> um, so, you know, there was some retribution there at the end too, but I would say that every guy at the table here definitely deserved it. Uh, I personally want to thank the staff, uh, not only for the Heartland Poker Tour, but the dealers and the staff here at the Soaring Eagle. It was a phenomenal tournament. I've played in a lot of these uh, and I just really enjoyed myself. It was a great time. Just shy of 90,000, how do we celebrate tonight? I go home and get ready for work tomorrow at uh, 6 a.m. There you so go. there we go. Why don't you say hello to your kid, Bearcat, who will yeah. be watching this when, he, when he's old enough someday. Yeah, he will be. Bearcat and my, my wife, Adrian and Maya, uh, thank you. I love you all very much, and thanks for the opportunity, everybody here. John Dracakis has gotten second before in this event, so no doubt he is ecstatic about finally taking home that HPT title. Let's go down to the floor where James is talking to our newest HPT champion, John Dracakis. We're now joined with our new HPT champion. Please give it up for John Drakakis, ladies and gentlemen. First things first, I got to hand you some money. It's over 137,000. What's going through your mind right now, brother? Oh, I'm just, I'm so happy. It gives me some validation of my work and as a poker player. I always like to ask this question. At what point at this final table did you think I could do this and I could be the new champion? Uh, Probably last night with about 14, 15 to go. I thought I was going to have a real shot at winning this. All right, real quick, what are your plans for this money? It's just over 137000 a great payday. How do you celebrate, and what do you do with the rest of it? I'm probably going to buy a new car, for one, <laughs> and then back into poker. Sure, sure. And you've got your cheering section behind you, but most importantly, I think one of these guys is your boss. Now, can we call in sick tomorrow, or is that too obvious? I'm probably calling it either way. <laughs> Give it up for him. It's John Dukakis. He bested the field here. Over 400 players here at the Soaring Eagle Casino and Resort.
Well, Maria, that is a wrap here from the Soaring Eagle Casino Resort. And once again, congratulations to John Rakakis. I know that money is going to go a long way in his life and, of course, his poker bankroll. Yeah, I was very impressed by the way John Dracakis played throughout. I think he picked his spots well, he had well-timed aggression, and then he went in for the kill, and that is why he is our newest HPT champion. Speaking of being an HPT champion, if you think you've got what it takes to play on this stage in front of the cameras and the lights, well, why not just give it a shot? Get off the couch right now, fire up the computer, head on over to HPTPoker.com. Pick an event that will work for you, and who knows, maybe you'll be playing for the life-changing cash. That's our show for tonight. For Maria Ho, I'm James Larson, and we hope to see you next time on the HPT.